in Canada. How are you? I'm good, my man. I'm good, my man. Listen, I want to make sure that uh, I, I get all this right here. So, Quint Beastwood, where did you get that name from? Uh, I got it from the, I think he's a director, Clint Eastwood. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, just a play on that name. It was like a, I was gaming like, this is like 13 years ago. And I saw somebody with the name, I used to play Call of Duty. They had the name Clint Eastwood, Clint Beastwood. And I'm like, damn. Oh, okay. Good name. <laughs> so I took it. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Quentin, Quentin is your real name, Iria. Iria or Raya? What did I say before? Aria. Aria. Where are you from, where are you from originally? My dad is Nigerian and my mom is Jamaican. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, so you got uh, you got both sides. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> so but you're born and raised in Canada? Yeah, I was born here. Oh, so yeah. you so you never been back to Nigeria just to see never. No, not yet. Not interested? No, I I want to. It's just yeah. I, for some reason I just didn't end up going when I was younger and then as an adult I've always been working and busy. Yeah. Awesome. I want to, yeah, let's talk, you know, I want to know who, who Quint, Quentin uh, is. So let's talk about your life growing up in Canada and, uh, you know, because you're a taller guy. You were like six foot one. Yeah. Yeah. Did you play, did you play football before any, before bodybuilding? Yeah, I played football, but I stopped football when I was like 14 and then I switched to basketball. Oh, so you did basketball too. Yeah. How long did you play basketball before, before you started bodybuilding? I was playing up until, like, I played basketball forever, pretty much, ever since I was, like, seven. I played up until I was about 18, 19. I was still hooping when I was, no, about 20. I was still hooping when I turned pro. Oh, really? Then, yeah, yeah. But then I stopped because <laughs> it just didn't make sense anymore. Yeah, and probably also worried about, you know, injuring yourself, jumping around too much. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was still throwing down dunks and all that. <laughs> really? So, so when did you start bodybuilding or lifting weights? I got into lifting weights around 17 and I was doing it consistently. And uh, around 19 years old, I realized I needed to compete. How old are you today? I'm 26. 26. Oh, damn. Another, another young one that <laughs> has a bright future ahead of him, man. It's unbelievable, man. Where you guys come from all of a sudden? It's <laughs> uh -huh. a good so 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 uh, so you started training at seventeen. When so you started competing at nineteen? You said I competed in my first show. I was I turned twenty. So by the time I competed, I was twenty. Oh okay. So you just first show six years ago. Yeah. Tell me about it. How how did it go, man? How did you? Who told you? You know, you might you should go on stage. Did you decide yourself, or did anybody tell you you need to go? Well, I, at first, I, <clears throat> bodybuilding seemed intimidating it seemed like something that was very hard mm -hmm. and i didn't even know there was a natural bodybuilding because I, I was natural and uh everybody in my gym they'd see me growing so class like man you gotta compete you gotta compete i'm like okay you know i'll give it a shot so i gave it a shot i also would watch a lot of bodybuilding motivational videos you know so i was into bodybuilding but i just didn't think i was good enough and i just gave it a shot i competed in like a junior category and i won my class Oh wow, for one in first one first show, yeah. And did that kind of fill the fire a little bit more, or? Yeah, it it did. I'm like, man, like I, I'm I'm pretty good for you know for the people my age, you know. And then I decided I was going to compete against all ages, and then I did that, and it was definitely a bit harder. And then that's what sparked that uh, that bug inside me. I'm like, I need to keep doing this. I need to be the best. Yeah. So, and what what show did you? When did you turn pro? What show was that? It was the Canadian Natural Nationals in 2017. Natural, still. Yeah. So you turned pro natural. Yeah, completely natural. Wow. When was that? This was uh, May 2017. Oh. So five years ago, you were still natural. Yeah, I was natural up until 20, 2018. That's crazy, man. Yeah. That well, that tells you about your genetics. Yeah, I guess I guess they're pretty good. So tell so okay, this, this is interesting. So tell me what happened because uh, you were you were very successful as a natural bodybuilder. What mm. happened? When did you decide, or why did you decide? Okay, let me let me jump over to the dark side. <laughs> so after I turned pro, I was still unsure if I wanted to compete as a pro because realistically speaking, my natural physique. 
I wouldn't have been good in men's physique. I wouldn't have been good in classic. So I'm like, regardless, I didn't know what category I wanted to do, but I knew that if I wanted to pursue it, I needed to make that decision. It was hard for me to make. So it took me about a year after turning pro before I decided, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take a shot at either classic or open. And, you know, one of the things that motivated me was like the late 90s, early 2000s mm-hmm. bodybuilding, you know, and I would watch the previous Olympias. I'd see Jay and Ronnie. I would see you. I'd see like Kevin Lavroni. And I would see the look and I'm like, that's the look, yeah. you know, that's the look. And I knew I couldn't achieve that naturally, so I knew what I had to do. So, so after after let's say after you switched over, so how fast did you put on size? Was it was it, was it crazy? So <laughs> it was. Uh, so the most I weighed in the off season when I was natural was two forty nine, two fifty. Wow! And then after my first year, I was up to three hundred pounds in less than a year. Yeah. So. <laughs> So it was pretty well, well we got we got to keep in mind you you're a taller guy so 300 yeah. pounds on a six foot one is not uh, the same as as of, on someone who's like five seven or five eight but oh, still yeah. very very impressive because you know your shape alone I mean this is what when I when I look at your pictures your shape is what what gets me because you stand tall you know and and we all know for for taller bodybuilders it's it's always harder to fill out the frame you know with the longer yeah. limbs and stuff but when i look at you, you 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 it seems like you're doing pretty well i mean your quads is unbelievable oh thank you you know you don't have any any problems with having big legs on a six foot one frame which is always the issue with most guys it's very rarely we see someone who, who's that tall who has quads that matches up a body You know, mm-hmm. is that something that you always knew that you had better legs or you train your, you know, what do you do for quads at, at Honestly, your height? I, I think uh, what, one of the things I've always been very good at activating and engaging the muscles properly. Mm-hmm. So if you see some of my leg days, I don't, I never need to lift as heavy as some other guys lift because I can get the same kind of contracting lift, contraction lifting, like a, a quarter of the weight. So for me, it's always been about, using the muscle and movement with a purpose as opposed to like super heavy weights. And uh, it's, it's always worked for me. Take me through a leg workout. So uh, I also work with a trainer, you know, Mike Van Wick, right? I was going to get to that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But you yeah, always... his leg is a brutal. Yeah. So, so a leg, a leg workout. So sometimes I split it quads and hamstrings. Sometimes I do a bit of both. So I'll start with like a, a hamstring curl. I would start with a hack squat. And uh, on the hack squat, I would work up to like uh, a pretty difficult set, a good tempo through the whole thing. And I would keep constant tension on the the quads as I do the repetition. So I wouldn't really, I would do my best to avoid locking out at the top. I would max out, do a drop set. I'd move on to some form of leg press. Then from the leg press, I'd do like a stiff leg. Like it's, it's very basic stuff, mm. but again, it's just, I think the way that I do it, It's not about the weight. A lot of guys, they're just pushing crazy weights. And you got all these guys that are really strong on legs, but their legs aren't necessarily, like, responding. So I think it's very imperative that people find out what style of training works for them. But I do a lot of supersets. So I do a yeah. lot of volume, very low rest periods, and uh, I, I full range of motion. And, yeah, I just started squatting again recently, and the most I went up to was, like, 205. You yeah. know, I didn't need to go crazy. Some of these guys lift from six plates. And, I mean, some of these motherfuckers are strong, and it's working for them. But, right. you know, my joints, they can't handle that shit. Oh, so really? You got, you got tiny joints? Little, they, they little as shit, man. <laughs> yeah, but that, but that's why you, you, your bellies look so full and round, because you got the tiny joints. Yeah, it works in my favor. Yeah. So when did you decide to turn uh, to to compete as a pro? Was it the first one in Toronto in 2019? Yes, yes, that was the that was my pro debut. Uh, so you obviously did that one because you are from Canada and, and you know you don't have to travel. But yeah. what what when how do you decide what pro shows to do? Because when you look at the competition, I mean you obviously yeah. you obviously I think way too heavy for classic anyway. So you're open bodybuilder. So yeah. how how do you you know what goes into you know? If you when you decide, you know, I'm going to do this show or that show because I see you did the New York Pro in 2020, and then you, the next show was the Romania Pro, the Muscle mm-hmm. Fest in Romania in 2021. Why not compete before that? And, and how do you choose what show to enter? So when I chose New York, it was because I was I was feeling good for my first year of competing, and uh, I, I knew New York is always a hard show, and I wanted to see 
where I measured against some of the best guys in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not the guy that wants to go to the little show and get to the Olympia because if I only got there because I did a week show, I'm gonna get spanked when I get there. So I want to go against, I want to go against the top guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, the New York, I, I was off. I wouldn't have won. I wasn't good enough to win, but I was also off, like pretty off. And uh, I came in a place, I wasn't like happy with where I played. I was happy with it in the sense of, I think it was fair, but that's not, it's not what I wanted, right? Yeah. So I just, that one was to test myself to see where I stood. And I did get an idea of where I stood. I knew what kind of work I needed. Romania was just timeline. Timeline wise, I had enough time to grow and recover from a surgery I did. And then I had time to get into a prep. And uh, a link, it was a five month prep because I yeah. really want to make sure I came in nice and in shape. What surgery did you go through? It was gyno. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the other the other part of going switching over to the dark side. I know it happens, it's annoying, man. It happens for some people, and some people like me, I never had any issues. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. Oh, must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> so did you have to remove both of them or just to make sure? Yeah, yeah I had oh, to okay. remove both of them. How long yeah. were you out after that? Uh, I only didn't work out for like two weeks. That's it? Yeah, the, the recovery process, like there was a, it, it was, I could see, it took a while for it to actually recover, like a lot, like many months, but I was still able to train. Yeah. The the way they did it, they went, they kind of like pulled it out from like my armpit. They went in. Oh, so, really? Yeah. If anything, it was more hard for me to do pull down motions because it stretched out here. Oh, okay. I was able to train chest, no problem. Wow. I never heard that before that they come in from the, uh, from the armpit. That's almost like doing a yeah. uh, breast augmentation. I mean, that's yeah, what yeah. They, yeah. They fancy out here, man. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So, listen, why, why, why did you, why did you wait from the New York Pro all the way to Romania? Is that because of the the, the surgery, or you just wasn't yeah. ready and you thought you had to put on more weight? I, I felt like I needed to add more muscle, yeah. and also I needed to recover because the with them lipoing it, with them pulling it out the way they did, mm. the recovery was longer than just pulling it out with the with the knife. So it, it took a while for my chest to look normal. So okay. I, I needed time and it gave me time to grow. Yeah. So when you look at your physique today and, and you know, and your body weight, where do you see yourself? Where do you stand at this point? Uh, man, I think I got, I, I think I got a good looking physique, you know, oh, your physique I, is awesome. I'm just, I'm just think, thinking size wise, you okay. know, for six <laughs> fixed foot one, what's your contest weight right now? Uh, around 262. 260. Do you think that's a good weight for you or do you need to add more size? I think if I could be 262, I mean, I, I definitely need more size. Yeah. I, I could have been better th than my last show, but I definitely need more size. I think if I could be, uh, and this is a realistic goal, like 266 shredded, like completely on point this year, everybody's going to have a problem, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, 266, that's, that's, I think that's very doable for you. I mean, you, you, you're, yeah. already, you're already right there. I, I can even see yourself in the 270s. Oh, yeah. I know? just mean like for this year. But yeah. like moving forward, I think 272 would be like really, really good at my height. Well, if you keep that tiny waist and, you know, and, 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 the, and everything, then uh, I think, because you kind of, you know who you remind me of? You kind of remind me of, uh, of, Sam, of Samson, Samson Dowda. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, and, and, and it's funny is that I think he's also from Nigeria. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But your physiques are pretty similar. You yeah. Know? He, might, he might be a little bit, I don't know, I'm not sure because I have never seen you guys standing next to each other. Yeah. Seems like he might be a little bit fuller in the upper body. He is. You know, and I put the but the physiques are pretty similar. And I told him the same. I think I think I see a lot of great things for him in the future because yeah. you know that's what's needed. The taller guys. Yeah. You know, we haven't had any taller guys since. You know, because right now, who's the tallest guy? Rami, and Rami's five <laughs> eleven. Yeah. You that's know, great. and and he seems yeah. to stand out. You know, because everybody is so short. So I think yeah. who was the last tall guy we had? Let me let me think back. 
I know Tony Freeman. Dennis oh, Wolf. Dennis Wolf, yeah. yeah. And I think Günther Slierkamp was before that, who's a taller oh, guy. Yeah, yeah. But there's not too many. And Paul Dillette, oh, no. you know, when you yeah, think yeah. back. So I think it's great to, to have some of you taller guys come back in and, you know, with a filled out frame that's super, super, sure. super dangerous. You know? Yeah, man. Yeah, it is. It's exciting, man. The new era of bodybuilding is on its way. Yeah. What's the goal for this year? My goal for this year is to win a show and qualify off of a win and not on points. But uh, at the end of the day, the goal is just the Olympia this year. And if I'm not sure when I'm going to compete just yet. You so know? you have no, nothing planned yet of yet? Not, not yet. But uh, we're, the idea is at least six, eight months or sorry, six, eight weeks of growth. And then the rest is prep. So we'll go straight until the end of the year to the Olympia. And uh, it, I, if, if I qualify at a good time, I might just try and qualify for the next year as well, since I'll already be in prep. So, you, so, but, so but you don't sit down and, and you look at shows that you can, you know, it's like, ah, oh, that might be a good show to do. Or you haven't thought about any shows at all? Man, they're all good shows to do for me. <laughs> um, I'm doing, so I'm actually doing blood work tomorrow. Uh -huh. uh, and based on that, like, so if, Let's say everything's good, which usually it is, uh, but I don't. I don't make. I don't make any plans until the blood work comes in good. Okay. You know, so once I see that, then I can create a game plan. But, but uh, okay, well, let's say the blood work comes back great. Yeah. You're 26 years old. Yeah, you know, it's gonna come back all right. <laughs> so, but what show are you eyeballing? Uh, I gotta hear something. So, so here, so here's the thing. If I have six to eight weeks to grow from this weekend, I think maybe maybe around, around Tampa or a little bit after Tampa. Tampa will be in August. And so it's usually start August. So maybe something like two, three weeks later. I don't know what show it is, but mm. and I want to compete in America. Okay, so you're definitely coming over here to compete. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. Definitely. Tampa is in August. And I oh, think, there's a Texas show, right? Around that and time? And then I was just about to say, yeah, there might be Texas show again uh, sometime right behind or after um, um, Tampa. Yeah. That will also qualify you. And I don't even know what I, I, I have now. I, maybe we should check what the schedule is. Yeah. To find a show for you. Because we got to get you. We got to get you on stage. <laughs> what is IFBB? Pro.com. Let's check. Yeah. But, but Tampa is always a great show, man. Always. It is. It is. Yeah. When you look, when you look at the Canadian bodybuilders, you know, I mean, this, we got Ian Bayer, we got yeah. Chris Bumstead, we have um, Antoine, you know, yeah. are, are you good with these guys? Are you guys, you guys collab in trainings together or? I've trained with, all of them at different points. Uh, I've trained with Ian and Chris once. Yeah, it's funny. I actually knew Ian before all of them. Uh, so I, I like I like all them guys. Obviously, you know, me and Antoine are like probably the closest because we've lived together for a long time. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. You guys were not anymore. Not anymore. But so you guys were roommates at one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's cool. He's so when I started working with Jordan Hamilton, it was because I I ran into them in person. I knew who they were. And Antoine knew, or no, Dorian knew me. Antoine didn't know me. And I guess Antoine, like, found out that I turned pro naturally. And he saw, like, my structure. And he's like, yo, we got to help this kid. So yeah. a huge yeah. reason why I'm doing this is because Antoine, like, he, he wanted me here. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I, 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 a lot, I, I owe a lot to him. You know, I owe yeah. a lot to him. Definitely, he's, like, he's a really cool cat. He's a really cool he's cat. awesome. And yeah. you know, even as even you know, as a competitor, you know, you can't help but when you see talent, you know, you got you got. I have to say something, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes you know people don't know how good they really are. And on and on this on the other side, some people think they're much better than they really are. <laughs> exactly. So that happens too. But yeah. in your case, I think you have a really, 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 I mean, an, an unbelievable physique. You know, yeah, and thank great, you. great thank detail in already in that 26 years old. You don't see that too often because, you know, sometimes muscle majority kicks in a little bit later in time, you know. Mm. So but in your case, I mean, you look you look like you're ready, man. Thank you. That man, that means so much coming from you. So <laughs> so who, who do you think is the best Canadian bodybuilder right now? Um, I OK, so who I think is the best right now is Ian. I think right now Ian's the best. Mm. I think all time uh, Paul Dillette. 
I'll I run. think. Well, I'm not. I'm not. At, I'm not uh, including Bumstead because he's a different category. Mm-hmm. But by accomplishments, Bumstead should win. But uh, I think. I, I don't. I think Regan will. I think Regan will. I think it'll be me and Regan at some point. Hmm. You know that are, that are like the top there's a, ones. There's another one I wanted to bring up, Regan, because yeah. he's also kind of similar to you because of the yeah. height and everything. Are you are you guys close? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we also live together too. All the three of us. <laughs> oh, I'm, okay. Because when you were when you were in, uh, in 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 Las Vegas, you were staying with yeah, Matt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or no, I see. Yeah, what's the name? Not Matt. I wasn't with. Or I think Regan was with Matt, but I was with uh, Stanimal. Oh, Stanimal, yeah, right. Yeah, oh, yeah. my bad, my bad. You were with Stanimal because I remember when oh, I talked to him. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So, so you sometimes just go over there just to train with those guys? That was my first time going, and it was it was amazing. So I'd love to go again. Oh. Uh, who knows? Maybe at some point, I I'd, I could even do a prep there, man. Like it's just so yeah, cool. It's so it nice. is good bodybuilding scene over there, man. Is Regan there now permanent, or what is he doing? I I, I think he I think he's. Regan, he kind of, he comes and goes, right? Like, mm. he might be there for, like, six months to a year. I don't know how the whole visa situation works. Mm. So he'll probably come back at some point and then go back. Do, how long can you guys stay in the U.S. When, from if you have the Canadian passport? Six months at a time. That's it? Yeah. And then what? Then you have to just go do a re-entry or you have to stay <laughs> away for a while? Yeah, I think, I don't know how long you got to be outside, but six months you leave and then you can come back, I think, the next week or so. Huh. So you can uh, come come right back. So why why worry about a visa? I know. Yeah, it's it's kind of weird. I, I could be wrong though. I could be wrong. I haven't yeah. looked into it. But uh, yeah, like if you stay just four months and you go, you can come mm. back in like a couple weeks. Yeah. If you stay at the till the tail end of those six months, they might not let you back in. Oh okay. How's Regan looking? Uh, when I saw him, he looked big, man. Yeah. He looked big. Uh, from his pictures, he looks like he's because he was sick for a bit. So I, I think it kind of like slow things down but man Regan always shows up he always shows up pretty yeah. good. what do you think is what do you think his changes are at the Arnold coming up it was it three weeks less than three weeks oh you know I don't like making predictions because these guys are all my peers but uh first of all I, Brandon Curry I can't bet against Brandon no absolutely um I think the second oh man I, I don't know. It, it depends on who shows up. Mm-hmm. It depends on who shows up. But I think Regan's got the goods to beat like almost all of them. I think Regan has the goods to play second, but uh, I think Brett does as well. I think Samson. Sam, I think Samson does too. I think those three, and I, I think those three, depending on how who shows up, could one of them could play second. Okay. Would you would you include? Um... Steve Kuklo and Justin Rodriguez in that mix? They're great. They're great. They those guys definitely pro- will probably end up in the top five. But so you I, so, so you think that Regan and Samson they're gonna beat Steve and Justin? Maybe not both of them, but I think at least one of them will. Yeah. I, I think Brett Brett's been like he's been improving at such a rapid pace. You yeah. know, the way he looked next to Hunter and he looks bigger than that time. And Hunter came fourth, right? So it just I think Brett is a lot better than people might realize. I think maybe maybe they do realize it though. I think so. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so I, I don't really know. believe I think, it. They do. They know. Yeah, I think and and I think Samson for a long time he's been overlooked, uh, but but it all depends. Like I, again, I, Samson shows up though. No. It all depends on how everybody shows up. If Regan comes in a hundred percent with the shape and structure with the back, nobody's touching him, man. Yeah. But I don't think he'll beat Curry. No. But. If Regan comes in 100%, like, I got him for second. What about what about William? William, I mean, fuck, I hate to say this because it's – I feel like I'm at a point now if I say the wrong thing, someone's going to make a video about it or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, man, yeah, so you, I, can't, you can't worry about what other people do with whatever you say. So if you're worried about that, then you need to – Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Bonac, like I'm a huge fan of Bonac. I've been a fan of him for a while. Um, he he seems like his better days were behind him, but mm-hmm. but he's still he's still a very good bodybuilder. Uh, I just don't know. I, I don't know. I just I, I yeah. don't know. I, I still would favor some of the younger guys. Yeah, I th- I think at the time where 
the switch of the uh, of the younger younger generation it, it's, mm. it's 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 we're, we're right there right now so it's it's about yeah, yeah, to yeah. happen but i also believe that william now is better than he was at the olympia and uh, oh, yeah yeah because yeah, i mean i talked to him he said he's heavier his legs are back you know and, and he's he's a veteran he's not one of the newer guys that you know look in the mirror and see something that's not there you diet down train hard and supplement smart for months when the time comes to step on stage don't leave your tan to chance go with the pros pro tan number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the olympia for the last 15 years don't step on stage without it pro tan Mm -hmm. So from him, for him saying that, you know, his legs are back, back and, you know, he's, he's, I don't even know, I don't remember how many kilos he was bigger than yeah. he was before, you know, that means something. So, and I think okay. he, ha he has something to prove. He, uh, he admits, you yeah. know, on the podcast that, you know, he's, he, you know, this is a very important show for him, you know, it's a, you know, yeah. because uh, if, if, it, if it doesn't fare well, this is not going to look good for him in, in, in the future. So yeah. I think he, he's, he's in it. 100% and uh, I believe that we will see a, a improved William from the Olympia yeah. and even from uh, from the uh, the Arnold in 2020 where he won. Mm -hmm. Think about it, 2020 he beat Rami and he beat Dexter Jackson, both at the Arnold. That that was a crazy look. Yeah, yeah. That was a crazy look. Now yeah. imagine, imagine he'll come back looking like he did at the Arnold. Okay, if he comes back with that look, mm. yeah, he... <laughs> It's between him and Brandon. But I, I still think Brandon would beat him. Yeah. But but I think, yeah, I, I don't think anybody else is touching him or coming close if he looks like that. Yeah. Brandon looks crazy Just, right now. I like the yeah. fact that Brandon puts out stuff for people to see. He's not oh, man, he's not hiding. He has he's not trying to be a surprise factor. He's showing the world what, what he looks like. And I think he looks yeah. unbelievable. I, I think so too. Yeah. He's a great champion, man. I love I love Brandon Curry. Yeah. A lot of the guys when they're at that high level, and I, you, they don't owe me nothing, but some guys don't really like like you. Okay, so coming a compliment coming from you means the world to me, mm. you know. And coming from someone like Brandon Curry or some sort of encouragement, it means a lot to me. A lot of guys that are high up, they don't really do that, which is okay. Yeah. But the fact that. He puts out so much for the fans. The fact that he's so good, he's so family oriented, mm -hmm. he's encouraging to young guys coming up. Like I just, I, I love Brandon Curry. I'm yeah. a huge fan. No, I, 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 I thought he should have won. I, I thought he should have won the Olympia last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that was my opinion. That's yeah, just no, I, I get, I get it. I absolutely get but, it. But, but I, but I mean, Big Ramy's also there's so much muscle, right? So yeah. he's so big that, yeah. So I, I got it. It was it was ultra close. It was super close, yeah. especially on Friday. I mean, one point. Come on. Mm. I mean, you could literally just flip a coin and 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 yeah. and, and and decide who wins the Olympia. But uh, and for him to come back and do the honor right after that, that shows me that he is he's he's he he's ready to prove to the world yeah. that he's still the top of the top of the top. And, uh, and I'm really looking forward to. Uh, to uh, commentate, you know, to do the broadcast uh, with, together with Fuad, another Canadian bodybuilder, awesome. yeah. you know, and and and, uh, and and broadcast the Arnold this year because I think it's going to be one of the better ones. I think so too, man. Yeah. I think so even too. though, even though um, Raphael dropped out, Shaban dropped out, and Nathan the Asher just dropped out. Yeah, you know, and even 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 with those three guys missing, I mean, it's still going to be an unbelievable show, and he's still, you know, everybody has Brandon winning. Yeah. But from second to whatever, nobody knows yeah. what's happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that that's going to be the interesting part of this year's Arnold, and I can't wait. You know, yeah. And uh, Me too. let's talk about you making it to the Olympia. Let's say you make it to the Olympia. Where would you see yourself? You know. Oh man! When you look uh, at the, when you look at the guys, you look at the guys that are there right now, and we talked about a new generation: Hunter, Nick Walker, Regan Grimes. Um, who else have we got that we not just not Justin Rodriguez, Ian Vallier, those yeah. guys. Where do, where do you see yourself in that mix? I think at this time, like I, I think I still need to prove myself. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think I still need to prove myself. I don't think I've brought in a package that's necessarily better, like good enough to beat majority of those guys at this point. But I re I improve at a rapid rate. I think this year, my goal for the Olympia is like t between 10 and 12 right now. Mm -hmm. But again, for, first and foremost, I got to get there. To qualify. <laughs> the goal is to yeah. qualify. So I got to get there first. But um, I, got, I got some improvements to make, mm -hmm. you know, but I definitely... I think I think I'm in that conversation with those boys for sure. So when you say you have you have improvements to make, what are you talking? What what what, what needs to get better? My my back. Mm -hmm. I, I got to improve my back, and I just figured out a new technique. So I, <laughs> tell, I tell, tell me like about it. Tell me about it. Uh, I, I I I change up how I do my back days. So I, I'm really focused. I tone down the weight a lot more, mm. and I'm just really focused on keeping those elbows forward and just engaging the lower lats, just constant, doing back twice a week. Uh, I feel a big difference already. I haven't been running. I haven't been running a cycle or anything. I feel like I'm making slow improvements right now. So I think when things kick off, I think the changes are going to be more, more prominent. What's your rep range? I would say about eight to 12 on average. Okay. Yeah. That's a good, but then range. my all out sets, like, it could end up being like 17, 18, 20. Right. It just depends on what kind of juice I got left in me. Yeah. So tell me, what is it like training with Mike, big Mike? Man, what big is Mike that like? It's uh, it, it's cool because it, it's funny. Cause from the outside looking in, he looks so gangster, you know, he's, He, he got the tattoos, and I think most people are, like, afraid. Most people, like, they judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. They don't associate, like, knowledge and wisdom with somebody that looks so tough, right? Right. right. So, man, it, it's funny because, like, training with him is always refreshing because I've worked as a trainer for seven years, so I know all the right cues, and I know when a trainer is doing things right and wrong, everything he does is on point. You know, where if I'm doing a lat pull down, he'll be, like, elbows in wrist straight, you know, a bicep curl. If I'm fatiguing my, my arm starts to curve, he'll, he'll straighten my arm. Uh, if I'm straining when I'm pulling or pushing and my neck uh, starts to bend, he'll get me to keep my head and spine in alignment. Mm -hmm. So it's just so many things. And he makes it so simple. So people don't always realize, but it's just like those workouts, man, they're so effective and they don't need to be long. Like I could train by myself for like an hour, 40 minutes. And like, it's, Usually I'll get. You train it. You train an hour and forty minutes. Well, sometimes, sometimes, like okay. it's sometimes an hour, like sometimes an hour to an hour forty minutes, like especially if I have a different partner with me. But with Mike, it could be like fifty-five minutes long, right? And I'll get just what I got in that longer workout in that shorter period of time. And those leg days, man, those leg days kill me. Like yeah. I can't train. I cannot train legs the way Mike makes me train legs at all. Like there's no way. Yeah. <laughs> But that shows you that he's he's uh, he's the right guy, he is. you know. When it comes, because you know he also trains with Antoine, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. How many how many days a week you train with him? I I, I train with him once a week now. There was yeah. a time where I was doing five days a week, yeah. and it was it was fantastic. I loved it. Yeah. So you just go for back on back days now, mostly. For the most part, or for the most part, but sometimes just depending on what, where our schedules fall, I'll just get whatever I can hmm. because there's always something good to learn from them. So even like yesterday, we did an arm day. And it was it was refreshing, you know. It was like certain things or certain cues that I wouldn't normally do on my own. And now it's like, okay, I'm, I gotta re-implement that. Yeah. What's your diet like in off season? Like now, where you off and everything, and you, you you still stick to a clean diet? Well, for for the most part, but I, I snack. You know, if uh, if there's an opportunity to go out <laughs> and have food, I'll I'll do it. But <laughs> I don't. I, I only gauge it based off my appearance, mm -hmm. right? Or how my physique looks. So if I pose and I see, oh, my sides, like I look like I got love handles today, I'll clean it up for like three, four days. And then usually by that point, I look pretty good. Yeah. And then, <laughs> it's so, you know what? That sounds so easy. You know, I see some love handles. Oh, all right, let me clean up my diet. <laughs> three days later, oh, boom, shredded. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that shit not work with me? I see love handles every day. Yeah. And I, my diet is clean, you know, but I, I think, I guess when you get to a certain age, shit just don't work the same. No yeah, more. It, that's got to be it. Oh, man. And I, I, was, I, was, I was hanging in there really good for a long time, man. I'm yeah. like, and I'm like, I'm telling myself, I was like, damn, I think I can do this forever. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, I still do my cardio. An yeah. hour Stairmaster every day. I st- on a strict diet, and my shit goes to shit. <laughs> no way. It's crazy. I think, and I, I don't know. I don't even remember who I talked to the other day. And I, I, I kind of not complained, but I just mentioned it. And he's like, "How old are you now?" I said, "I'm gonna be going on 56 now." He said, "Hey, that's exactly why." I was like, <laughs> okay. I was like, I was like, really? Do I really have to accept it? This? I was like, okay, fuck it. Then I guess yeah. that's it. Guess it's over with. No more tank tops. Hey. No more <laughs> topless. None of that stuff, you know. It's, nah. it's, it's all for you, young guys, man. That's <laughs> Are you going to the Arnold? I, I can't. I got an important appointment that day. Oh, really? Yeah. So, but are you going to try to watch the? Eye. Oh, what's wrong with your eye? Yeah, one of my eyes is like the vision's like the cornea is broken. Cornea got you. Is- Listen, we talk. Talk to me because I'm just come. Get, I just got out of the eye a specialist appointment yesterday. Yeah. I have eye issues too. Really? Yeah, I went to. Uh, tell me about. Tell me about yours first. It's called keratoconus. Okay. It's like this disease where your cornea just keeps getting weaker and weaker and keeps breaking. Okay. And I had a surgery for it, which was it stops it from getting worse. So this eye is really good, but this eye, I feel like it may have gotten worse over the past couple of years. So I have to go back and see the specialist and mm-hmm. the the day. So I I had my initial appointment with my optometrist uh, in December. And then this appointment was booked for March 3rd. Mm-hmm. So it, it took forever to get the appointment. I'm like, darn it. Yeah. I can't go, but uh, it's a good, it's an important appointment. Yeah. So. I, for me, for me was, yeah. uh, I went to, uh, it was in November, went to Dubai. And then all of a sudden I felt like, it just, it just felt really funny in my left eye. And I was like, you know, I was looking and I'm, it felt like, I don't know, funny vision, only mm-hmm. in this eye. And then, um. We went to I went to Egypt after that, and then on the way back from Egypt, I start seeing floaters and, and dots and and like like foggy, not cl- wow. not white clouds, but black. Wow. And it got worse and worse. And I went to an eye doctor. I mean, I went to a, the first eye doctor. I went to all they did was to check my eye pressure, and uh, the pressure should be between I mean not more than twenty, I guess. Yeah. And my eye pressure was forty nine. So they said they immediately have to do something. I mean, I had to take drops for to keep the pressure down, and then they sent me to a specialist, and the specialist they detected that I have an inflamed retina on the front and on the back. Somehow that's how they explained it to me. I, um, and then I, they had to put me on antibiotics before because they said this whatever. I she asked me if I'm in contact with cats. I said no. She said, "This could have been when you were uh, when you were a child." I was like, "I don't remember being in close contact with cats for a long time." Anyway, so she said, "This comes from a an, an bacterial infection in your body that causes the inflammation in your retina." So I was on uh, on antibiotics for two months, and then prednisone. And just a couple of weeks ago, they took me off of meds because she said that the inflammation is gone. Yeah. And a couple of days ago. I start seeing those dots on my right eye. No. This whole time I'm saying, thank God it's only a left eye because I was really, I'm, I was unable to see because there's so much going on that you can't focus. Mm-hmm. And now I'm in the shower the other day and I have, you know, a bright wall and, and all of a sudden I'm like, well, there's things going on in my right eye now. So I started, I started tripping. So I called the specialist. I said, listen, this and this is happening. So I went there yesterday. Mm-hmm. And she basically she checked both, you know, she dilated both my eyes, checked my eye pressure, everything was fine. And she looked in there and she said, there's nothing. I was like, then what is this that I'm seeing? She said, <laughs> could be age. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. Yeah, I was like, okay, so that's what it is. Now I said, my body goes to shit, my eyesight goes to shit. <laughs> I said, I'm all I'm waiting for is to the day where I explode. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I hope everything's good with your eye, man. I hope you get this fixed because you're too young, you know, and eyes, are, you only have two. You know, we can't fuck yeah, around yeah. with the eyes. That's important. It's scary. All right, brother, listen, I want to thank you for coming on. You know, thank you for your time. I appreciate it, and I wish you nothing but the best, man, and hopefully, and I, I'm almost positive that you will qualify because I don't see why you shouldn't qualify. And then, uh, you know, to have you on the Olympia stage where you belong, man. That's the new generation. Thank you so much, Dennis. All right, brother. So take care, man. Stay in A. Stay safe. And when next time you're in Vegas, let me know. I'm going to come out there and meet you guys. 
Yeah, all right, man. All, all right, right, brother. Sure. All right, my man. Take care, right. my man. Be safe. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye-bye.